Hey folks, today we're going to be reviewing my new phone, the Moto G first generation with LTE. This is the LTE model that was released in the summer of 2014, and this is my new phone, and we will be talking about it in quite a bit of depth. So get your popcorn, sit down, and listen to me yammer on about a phone. Yay. This is not the first Android phone I've had. Uh, I had the Moto G second generation uh, from about September or October to uh, up to basically uh, this weekend here. Uh, I got this phone recently. I replaced my second generation Moto G. I sold my second generation Moto G on eBay and I bought this one to replace it instead. Uh, and there are several reasons why. Now I want to make clear that the the mo both uh, generations of the Moto G are basically the same phone underneath the skin. They have the same CPU, same GPU, same specs all around, apart from things like the camera, the screen, and uh, and the speakers. Actually, the the second generation Moto G has front facing speakers, whereas this one has a speaker on the back right there. Now the reason I went back to the first generation one was number one, you get L you can get a version of this with LTE, unlike the second gen. Although I think the second, knowing the first generation, the second generation will probably have an LTE model uh, sometime in 2015, I would guess. Uh, and the battery life is actually better on the older generation one. Uh, the smaller size is nice too. I actually like this size of phone a lot. Uh, but the battery, the main thing is the battery life is better because. When they made the second generation Moto G, they made the screen bigger, they gave you speakers, they gave you a nicer camera. But the one thing they didn't upgrade that they really should have was the battery. It's the same capacity battery that's in this one. Uh, and that's a mistake, especially when you have a bigger screen. Uh, like when the screen is physically larger, it will eat up more battery just because of, that's just the nature of screens. And that really got annoying to me after a while. Like th that phone should have had much better battery life than it did. When my... When my Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 7.0 with the 7-inch screen has better battery life than a 5-inch phone, there's something wrong with that. So I ended up getting this uh, Moto G, and this has proved to have ve very good battery life, just so much better. Uh, despite it having worse cameras and a smaller size, I actually like this phone a lot better. Uh, one funny mishap that happened with this is I actually ordered a black version of this phone, and th as you can see, the box has a black phone on it. Where I tore off this label, there was a uh, a label that said black. You can actually see that in the camera test video I did of this. But there was a white phone in the box, as you can see here. So somebody doing inventory <laughs> had either Amazon or Motorola slipped. But luckily, it doesn't matter. I actually ordered uh, the the Motorola flip case for this phone in black. I tried using it for a while as you saw in the camera test video and I just thought it looked really bad so I've returned that and I've bought a white uh, flip case and I'll show you that in this video once it gets here. But yeah, my main reasons for getting the first generation is that it just seems to be a better phone all around as far as uh, thoughtful physical design and uh, as well as just the battery, mainly the battery. I, I I really have a fundamental problem with the way batteries are today, and getting the most life out of a battery is important to me. So I went with the first gen. Plus, LTE is really nice on a phone, so why not go for that? Uh, if you like bigger screens, you like better cameras and front-facing speakers, go for the second generation one. Despite uh, my nitpicky, nit, despite my nitpicky attitude towards the battery, that's still a really really nice phone. It's fantastic. But this is fantastic for all the same reasons that one is. So let's dive into this review. So when I first saw the Moto G, I thought, hey, Android phones are getting better and they're cheap at the same time. This is a very good thing. And that's what the Moto G really is. Um, cheap motor, or cheap uh, Android handsets used to be really, really, really crummy with like resistive touchscreens and all this other nasty junk. They also used to be uh, quite Chinese in origin. Uh, very cheap and just nasty phones, but Motorola has absolutely nailed it with phones like this for first and second generation. Uh, they have absolutely, uh, n they have absolutely hit a home run with both this first generation one and the second generation one. They're some of the best phones for the money 
you can buy today. This phone was $190 because it was the LTE model, but the first and second generation ones that do not have LTE are $180. And for your money, this is phenomenal. Like, seriously phenomenal. I'm used to iPhones. Uh, these are the phones I've owned over the years. I owned two dumb phones. One was a flip phone, one was not. Both were Motorola, actually, so I'm kind of going back to my roots by getting a Moto G here. Um, the other ones were the first generation iPhone with just Edge. That was a nightmare, let me tell you. The iPhone 3GS, the iPhone 4S, and the 5S. And after the 5S, I did not like the design of the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. That is what compelled me to get the Moto G. I really, really like the Moto G a lot. The, I, I'm definitely an Android person, I can tell you that. After using it for uh, many, many months here on both my tablet and my phone, I have definitely figured out that I'm most definitely an Android, Android person. That's my text tone, by the way. <laughs> Comment below if you know what game that's from. Now, I'm not one of these reviewers that's just going to sit here and tell you the specs of the phone. I mean, you can look all that stuff up yourself. There, If, if you Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine you use, uh, if you search, if you just do a search for uh, the specs on these phones, they're very easily found. Uh, but I can tell you a few of the specs. Uh, the back camera is a 5 megapixel camera. Uh, it's okay for video. Uh, it's, it's decent enough for pictures, but for video it's not that great. There's a flash under that. Uh, you should you should take a look at the camera test video. I'll put that link in the description and maybe in an annotation as well, so you can take a look at that. Um, there's also a speaker right next to that, so the speaker faces the back on the uh, um, first generation Moto G. On the top, you have the headphone jack, and it looks like a microphone. Uh, on the bottom here, there's another microphone and the micro USB port. On the white, I'm glad I have the white version because I can actually show you stuff. There's the indicator LED right there. I don't know if you can see that. Of course, there's a speaker for your ear. There's a front-facing camera. I think that's the proximity sensor right there. On the side, you have volume rocker and the power button. On the other side, you have absolutely nothing. As you can see, this phone has a nice curve to it. It actually feels really nice in the hand that way. Uh, it's not a complete square, but it 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 fits nice in the hand. One thing I do have to say about this phone is it has some heft to it, which is really nice. It feels like it's built. It doesn't feel like a like a featherweight piece of junk. And that really that makes me feel good when I hold a phone to feel that it actually has a bit of heft to it. It feels like it's actually made of something substantial. Well, let's take the back cover off. The back shells of these phones are removable. So you can put your own custom case on here or the Motorola's custom cases by just taking these off. It's very hard to get these off. Uh, from what I've seen, you just pull from the uh, back here, and then you can get the uh, shell off. You pull right from under the micro USB, and you can get the shell off. This is the stock shell that came with it. It's white. I have a white flip case on the way that has a different texture to this. The back of this phone has a very sort of plastic texture to it. Soft touch plastic. Um, the case that I'll be getting has a very grippy texture uh, that actually I can show you with the old shell that I have with my Moto G, for, with my other Moto G. I'll do that in a second. But here's what you get when you take the phone apart. You get a non-removable battery. At least it's supposed to be non-removable. But if you take the thing, if you take the phone apart, I'm sure you can replace that battery with a guide from iFixit or somewhere else online. Uh, the nice part about this being the LTE model is it has an SD card slot. I have a 64 gig SD card in there with uh, music on it and some other stuff, but I use that to capture video along with other things on this phone, mostly for pictures actually. Uh, so getting the LTE model of the first generation uh, Moto G is important if you want an SD card slot because the non-LTE models do not have that. The non-LTE models of the second generation Moto G do have an SD card slot, though, which is very nice. There's your SIM card, <laughs> SIM card slot <laughs> up here. So, pretty simple inside. There's not much to it. Now let me show you the, uh, the more textured back to these phones you can get. I'm going to show you the one for my second generation Moto G, uh, just to show you what the texture is like, because that one's a black one, and the white one you won't really be able to see it that well, so give me a minute. 
This is an example of the uh, flip shell cases you can get. This is the one I used on my second generation Moto G. As you can see, the case is actually much bigger than the phone. So, you know, there you have it. Uh, but it's it's the exact same case for both phones. It's just that this one's a tad bigger in the, than the other one, and the speaker's no speaker on the back. So I'll show you what these cases are like. Uh, the reason I like these flip cases so much is they have a really grippy texture to them. I don't know if you can see that, but the texture is really, really grippy, um, almost like a almost like a bike handle, but you know less abrasive, uh, which is re really nice. I really, really like that, and I I have I'm getting the white version of this uh, for my small for my original Moto G, and I'm currently trying to sell this one. Hopefully, somebody buys it because uh, it's in pretty fabo shape. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this, these flip cases I like a lot. Motorola did a fantastic job. I know some people find it a pain to open the phone that way, but personally I like that because it protects the screen um, without using a screen protector. That way you can stick this phone in your pocket with that closed and you can have keys or flash drives or whatever in your pocket and it won't scratch the screen. And that's really, really, really nice about these cases. Motorola just hit, hit just nailed it with the accessories and the phones. Uh, I really hope that they continue to do this because they're doing a fantastic job. I really like uh, these products a lot. Okay, so I ended up getting the flip case for the Moto G and it has the same sort of texturing that I showed you on the black case for the old one that was sold, actually. Yay. So, when you open it, it turns the phone on and everything. There you have it. So what's my takeaway on the Moto G first generation? Best phone I've ever owned, bar none. Uh, for the price, like, I'm, I'm the type of person that likes having a middle ground type of device, and that's exactly what Motorola has done here. Uh, it, it's, it's not a complete cheapo phone, but it's also not a flagship either. It's sort of right in the middle. I would call this a mid-range phone more than I would a budget phone, uh, just because of the price point it's at and because of the performance. This has absolutely nailed it as far as mid-range phones go. Uh, plus, my experience with Android uh, has been very positive. I've I switched from iOS, and uh, the the experience has been extremely positive, especially because of Motorola's uh, migration application. That that helped me migrate my contacts and stuff uh, from iCloud in onto Google, which is really nice. So now I have all my contacts on this phone. I didn't have to copy them by hand or anything. The migration tools are fantastic on these phones. Um, so my experience with this has been extremely positive. The only complaint I have, really, is that uh, the camera is not so good. But honestly, that's because I've been spoiled by an iPhone, which is a flagship phone. This is not a flagship phone. So, you know, that's something you just have to take into consideration. But considering the fact that I don't use my phone to film YouTube videos anymore... And uh, all I really use it for is to take pictures. It's fine. Like, really, it, it's fine. I'm not a heavy, heavy phone user. I use it for... I just use my phone for basically the utilitarian needs uh, that I have online rather than too much entertainment or anything like that or a lot of multimedia. So that's completely fine by me. As far as the smaller size, I really like the smaller size. It's, it seems more... For my hands, it feels good. The Moto G second generation did too, but for my particular hands, I like the smaller phones a little bit better. So, that's very nice as far as uh, this is concerned. <clears throat> as far as experiencing Android switching from iOS, it's been a fantastic experience. The app ecosystem is much richer. Uh, it, it tends to just... The app ecosystem is much richer. The optimization for the apps that I use is a hell of a lot better than it was on iOS, especially for Facebook. Facebook was a battery drainer on iOS for me. It would, I, I would open Facebook or just leave it open, and it would just annihilate my battery for no real good reason. On Android, Facebook doesn't do that. However, I, I've had Lumia do that. I think that's because of the 3D rendering, though, so I don't know. I'd have to double-check that, but I've had Lumia do that, but none of the, uh, the crucial apps I've had have really been a battery drainer at all, even Messenger for Facebook which some people says drains your battery, hasn't done a thing to mine. So, Android's been a very positive experience on here. I, I really like Android a lot more than I do iOS, uh, simply because it has the geeky, utilitarian type of feel that iOS doesn't. iOS is kind of the ooh, shiny. 
Uh, iOS feels a bit more like a toy to me. It's still useful and it still works very well and I had a good experience with it. But I couldn't do as much with it as I can with Android. It just There's a lot of stuff that just simply couldn't be done. For example, using Lumia, the uh, Second Life client. Uh, there is a client on iOS, but it's piss poor and terrible compared to Lumia. Lumia is fantastic. So by choosing a phone platform, you get certain applications and certain developers. And that's a lot of the reason I went with this Moto G is because of some of the apps I can get and the, and the developers that support it. Because of the because of the apps I can get and the developers the developers that only develop for Android I don't, because of uh, iOS's stringent uh, approval uh, policies, so you can get a pr so there's a pretty rich ecosystem of of apps in here which is really nice I really like that. Plus the phone itself is just beautiful, I love this thing. So software experience has been fantastic. Uh, I might do a video about that in the future where switching from when I, uh, I'll probably do a video at some point about switching from iOS to Android on my phone and what the experience has been like. So stay tuned for that. But for now, this has been a review of the uh, Motorola Moto G first generation with 4G LTE. This, has been, this is a fantastic phone for the money, probably one of the best you can get for the money right now. And I would definitely recommend this to anybody both the first and the second generation ones but if you want LTE at at this at the time I'm filming this video you have to get the first gen so just keep that in mind hopefully they release LTE on a second generation one sometime in 2015 but right now this is where things stand there's one thing I like to say about uh, this uh, Moto G and that is that reception on this phone uh, along with the second generation one was so much better than it was on my iPhone 5S. So many times in my house, I, I, I just don't get that good a reception most of the time. At least I didn't the whole time I was on iPhones and on, uh, you know, Nextel back in the day. Uh, but this phone, I can text in my house no problem. I can text in places I never could before. And that's because the reception on these Motorola phones is fantastic. It's so much better than the iPhone 5S ever was. Uh, as far as reception goes. So that's very important to me, and that's just like one of the highlights of using this phone and making it such a joy to use is the fact that I can actually use it with, you know, the basic phone functionality in my own house without having to stand in a corner, or, you know, without having, without having to stand in a certain corner of the room or something like that. It'll just kind of work. And I like that. That's very nice. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.